In this lesson, we will finish our animated cycle. Let's play the animation back. Alright, so, as we saw in the previous lesson, there's a pretty nasty pause that we'll need to clean up. So I'm going to show you how to do that in this lesson, and we'll also learn how to have the animation continue infinitely. Let's go to grab the animated object, and we'll jump to the graph editor. Alright, sweet. From there, we can press either the F key or A key, just to focus in on our function curves. Remember, the difference between the two keys is the A key is going to focus on the entire animation, whereas if we were to select the keyframe and press the F key, now we focus on whatever we have selected. So watch, if I press A again, again we could see the entire animation. Alright, sweet. Now, what we'll do next is head over to the View menu and turn on Infinity. That way we can see how the animation extrapolates, how it continues before and after time. Now, we can cycle the animation by going to curves I'll go ahead and tear this menu off and at that point we would choose pre-infinity cycle post-infinity cycle alright fantastic so we've now made sure that the cycle will continue no matter what direction that we are playing so if we wanted to we can add negative frames to our sequence and have the animation continue to cycle but chances are you're not going to do that. But if you wanted to, you have the option now. Fantastic. Now let's say we go ahead and focus on our Translate Y channel. Let's go ahead and press the F key to frame in. What I'd like to do is show you why there's really no need to tweak this function curve. You can see we've placed a key right at the center of the animation. And because of that, it's created this really nice sine wave pattern that continues seamlessly. Very cool. Now compare that to our rotate Z function curve. Let's go ahead and press the F key. So here you can see we don't have any keyframes at the center of the frame range we're using. And because of that, now our pauses are noticeable. You can see by looking at the infinite curve that we have a few pauses at the start and end that will need to be cleaned up. So let me go ahead and show you how to do that. I'll go ahead and grab the start and end keys. We'll now go ahead and grab either the in tangents or out tangents on both keys. Let's go ahead and select the in tangents. At that point we can grab our move tool just so we could start to move our tangency and then I'll middle click and drag upward. So you can see why it's important to grab the same tangents on either keyframe because if we don't, let me go ahead and show you this, I'll go ahead and select the out tangent on one and the in tangent on the other and see that as we start to tweak the function curve, well it's going to create this really nasty break. And we don't want that of course. So again, we'll just go ahead and select let's say the in tangents on both keys and we'll go ahead and drag up and take a look at what we've done now. We've now created a really seamless blend. We've made sure that the infinite curve blends into our actual function curve on both sides. How oh, cool. And take a look at our cycled curve now. How smooth that looks. Not to say we should always aim for this because there are special cycles that shouldn't really have this type of wave pattern otherwise they would look too fluid. But the idea is the same. We want to make sure that we blend in and out of our animations in a very seamless way. Alright, sweet. So what I'll do now is go ahead and just close out of the graph editor and we'll take a look at our animation. Let's hit play. Sweet. Fantastic. So what we could do at this point is go ahead and set our time to let's say 300 or even 3000 if we wanted to and you'll notice that the animation will continue to loop. You can imagine how much time this would save you if you had several background characters and you needed to animate them walking through your set. Well, what you could do is create, let's say, just one loop, and then you can have that cycle infinitely. If you'd like to learn more about that, feel free to take a look at creating walk cycles in Maya, and we also have creating run cycles if you'd like to learn how to create that type of action. Alright, fantastic. So, in this lesson, we've learned how to cycle our animations infinitely. We've also learned how to adjust our function curves to make sure that they cycle seamlessly.